Now here I'm going to show you how to make a great bluegill bait. Floats on top of the water. It's great for fly fishing when the bluegills are in the beds, but it's also good when the bluegills are feeding in the shallow water. They do not have to be in the beds, and uh, you can use this bait year-round. It works better on a fly rod, but you can use it on a bobber with a couple of feet behind that, and the bluegills will hit that also. But what do we need to do to start out to make this bait? First of all, you want to go down to your hobby shop, and you want to buy these foamy sheets. They're uh, a rubber type foam sheet, three millimeter thick. This will cost you anywhere from 98 cents, depending on the sheet size, to maybe a buck 80. And you can make a couple hundred of these baits out of one sheet. Next thing you want is just some regular shanked hooks. I prefer size 10, the smaller hook. Uh, I think it's just uh, a little easier for the bluegills to get in their mouth. Your, uh, your catch ratio goes up. You can use a number 8, that will work as well. It's a little larger, but again, I prefer the number 10 hook. You would need some type of leg dressing. Whether you use a flashaboo, that's different colors for legs. You can use just plain thread if you want. You can use these rubber legs that break down in real thin layers. But anything just to give the water a little action when you're pulling your spider. You'll need a pair of scissors, something that's got a good point on it here, and we'll see why later. You'll need some epoxy, 5-minute epoxy or head smith, something that will hold that hook into the rubber body so that the hook doesn't come off or spin on you, and that will last a long time. One thing you do not want to use, do not use colored hooks like this. I've tried this. The problem is when you epoxy these colored hooks, whatever they paint these with, a lacquer or paint, that will come loose, and even though your hook's epoxy, your hook will spin. If your hook spins on these, you're not going to catch the fish. The hook's going to be buried into the foam body. So that's what you need to make these top water baits. You can make them look however you want. I like to try to represent a spider. That uh, works great. So that's what we're going to show you how to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my foam sheet here and I'm going to cut out the pieces I need to make my spider. So I take a piece here. This is 3 quarter inches by half an inch. Now my spider is going to end up smaller than that, and you can probably cut it smaller if you want to save some material, but the waste that you have is going to be very little. So you just carve that how you want. I'll give you an idea of how I carve these. You can see right there. I'll call the top part the head and bottom part the tail. So we'll carve out a couple of these. I like to go with four or five. Time I get my epoxy out, mix it up, and I apply it to the hook and this rubber body. It's pretty well getting hard, so any more than that, uh, I'm just wasting material. Now here you can see where all I did was cut these out with a pair of scissors, one half inch by three quarter inch, and that's what we're going to use. All right, carve the pattern I like. I will take one end and at a point here, and I will take halfway up that, and I will take my scissors and cut to that point. Now when I cut this side, I want to start at the same height. Go here, cut down. Now we've got the tail pattern. Next thing is I cut a little slot in here just to differentiate between the what you would call the head and the abdomen. But again, you can make whatever pattern you prefer. Try to make the same type of cut on the other end. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now we take the head or the top part and we want to Start rounding that off. Try to make the head a little bit smaller than the body part. Okay, so there we've got one. I'm going to take this, do the same thing, find a center point in your sponge, take your scissors, kind of cut to that center point, maybe a little to the side so you got a little wider tail. From the other side, the same distance up. Got a little bit of tail there. Make a small indent here to differentiate from the head and the body. The other side, do the same thing. And 
Now I'll make the head proportional. Again, does not do perfect. That's not bad. Take our last one, do the same thing. See if we can do a little better job here. Tail, straight across from this cut, down close to the center. We now have a tail. Make that head to body cut so we can differentiate. All right, I'm gonna go with that. So there now we have our bodies cut out. Then the next step, after you got your bodies cut out is you want to make a cut on the bottom side of your pattern here three quarters of the way down so you want to go three quarters of the way here make a cut with your scissors and right out the top that's where you're going to place your hook what I like to do start three quarters of the way down go maybe halfway up take my scissors make that cut where that stop go right up through the top make a cut there all right, now you can see, don't have to be perfect, I've got a cut into this foam rubber where my hook can lay. To demonstrate again, take one of your patterns that you got out of your foam, go three quarters of the way down, press in, and make a cut with your point of your scissors. You've made that cut, finish that cut right out the top of the head. You can see the cut that that made there and we're going to use that to lay the hook in. Now you want to do that to all four or five of your patterns that you've got. And there's another one. So I will complete those for you and then we'll go into the next step. Now for this next step, you want to have a couple of toothpicks handy. You need the uh, end points at least one of them pointed and we're going to mix up our epoxy now two things to use with the toothpicks one to mix up and apply your epoxy two when you're applying your hook down into our cut we want to use the point of this to insert through the eyelid of this hook to help push that down so we're not getting our fingers into epoxy and just kind of press that in there and then let that set all right we have our epoxy mixed so now, first thing we want to do is we want to apply some of this epoxy right into our cut here. So get some of that right down into the cut. Next, take our hook, put our body down, take one of our other toothpicks, as I said, put it into the eyelid here to help uh, press this down. Press that right down into your slot. Of course, we don't want to get any epoxy in that uh, eyelet there. All right, so you can see that hook is sitting in there. There's plenty of epoxy on it. Now we're going to have to hurry up as this dries. I'll get the uh, other uh, four going here real quick. You can see how I forced that epoxy down into the cut. Take our hook, take it at the bottom end here, put our toothpick in the eyelet, and press down on that hook so it sits inside that rubber body. Your last one, do the same thing. Fill that slot with some epoxy. Again, we want to have our hook in that slot. It's easier now if I just take the toothpick and put in that eyelet and help push that down and push that eyelet towards the head of our body, the spider. So there, I pushed it in. We've got it right there at the head, our hook sticking out. Now we've got some epoxy left. We want to add more epoxy to the bottom, covering that hook, making sure that hook is going to be well epoxy to the body. 
If you do that, this spider is going to last many, many fish. Um, I'm not talking 10. You can catch 50, 100 fish off this spider. And in my uh, videos that I have, uh, I show exactly that. Uh, one video, I think we caught about 70 fish on that fishing trip. We only kept a few nice ones, but we had a lot of fun uh, fly fishing. And the spiders on those are still good. All right, I have those five done. Um, our poxy's still good, so I might have been able to do eight of these. So you can judge on how fast you get at this, but for demonstrations here, I just want to stay with five. So next step now is how do we get legs on this? We can use just regular rubber bands, uh, very thin ones. We can use uh, rubber that comes in sections like this that breaks down to use legs. We can use flash of blue, uh, that's very thin like this. And this really works well, the bluegills really like that different colors, especially with a, uh, a tan or a brown spider. You can even use some thread. Here's some thread I got from other things that I've made, black thread. That will work too for legs doesn't have to be a lot so just something I prefer the rubber legs and the flashable you can even as in this spider I use just a rubber band I'd like to use a smaller one um, I did this as a d illustration on a size 8 hook a little bigger spider works great now when those dry I'm going to show you how to apply the legs all right here's our secret for applying legs to these foam bodies since it's foam and it's soft we take a small needle, take some thread, tie a little knot in it. This needle will go through that foam very easy. We're going to push the needle through, we're going to take our legs, we're going to put them through the thread here. We're going to pull that through, and we're going to get half the legs on one side, half on the other, pulling your needle all the way through, and you got your legs with no tying. First we're going to illustrate how to apply the rubber legs to the sponge body. We take our needle and we have our sponge body and we're going to push right through the sponge all the way through just like that. We're going to pull that. Now what I have on these rubber legs, there's two rubber legs there. You can see them starting to split here. I'm going to keep them together instead of splitting them. That will give it a little more strength when I pull it through. Now I'm going to place the rubber legs through the loop here. And not halfway, probably a quarter of the way. Then I'm going to pull the thread. You see legs coming out the other end here. Grab that in. Slide those through. Take them off my needle. Now I've got rubber legs through my sponge body. Cut off how long I really want those legs. And now I can separate these legs. So now I got two legs on that side. Do the same thing on this side. These are already coming apart, so these will be easy to separate. Got two legs on that side. And that's how to apply rubber legs to a spider or thread or flashaboo and not have to do any tying. Okay, now I'm going to illustrate how to use flashaboo on our legs. So I'm going to take one of our sponge bodies. Again, I'm going to take the needle about halfway in where the foam is, right where we made our slot. And I'm going to push that through. It's right on through there. Now I'm going to cut some flashy blue off and I'm going to put it through this loop and we're going to pull that through. And now there we have our flash blue coming through. Like I said, you don't need a lot and uh, the sunshine just sparkles off that. And uh, those gills, they'll see that. And I know it, it's not as big as the rubber legs, but that little bit of sparkling and the sun hitting that and that hitting the water. This was my best bait this year for bluegills in uh, shallow water and on the beds. Was this tan color with this uh, flashaboo rainbow color here. Now I'm going to get all these done. Another thing you can do when putting your spider legs through, 
As you remember in this one, I did two pieces of rubber band or rubber spider legs, and I pulled that through. If you find that they're not strong enough and they break on you, when you're pulling your needle and thread through, what you can do is you can do two different holes. That doesn't mean you have to have both legs in the same hole. You do a hole here and push through another needle and do another one. The other thing is have some water and wet these and they'll slide through that rubber a lot easier. Again, to show you on the flashaboo, a flashaboo is very tough. Um, it is not going to break on you, so that is going to pull through. So you don't have to worry about uh, doing two entries for that. Take a little more flashaboo here. Grab that, pull it right through, just like that. Come through pretty easy. Pull some back through. Said you don't need a lot of flashaboo. And that's going to make a pretty impressive fly in the water for the bluegills. All right, now we've got examples of how to apply the legs. We've got the spider that we did where we applied two rubber legs through one hole. We've got the two examples here where we applied the flashaboo through one hole. And then I got two examples where I used my needle and made two entry points and exit points and applied legs. Again, this is easier than putting two through the same hole, but again, put a little water on this rubber and uh, it pulls through a lot easier. Now what we'll do is we'll mix up a small amount of epoxy and each one of these entry and exit points we'll apply epoxy and we'll lock those legs in. Then you'll be done with these uh, flies and again no tying and you can make these very quick. Okay now we've mixed up a little bit more epoxy. Now we're going to take our bait, we're going to take a toothpick and we're going to apply some epoxy right around those legs. That will lock them in. The only way those legs come off is if uh, a northern bass or something ripped them legs off. Same thing with our uh, flashaboo. We're going to throw some uh, epoxy in there right into the uh, groove that we made. That will lock those in. Now that we've got our epoxy applied, we'll let those dry. You can see this is not hard to do. It's very simple. There's no tying, so you don't have to have a special tire or the clamp to hold these hooks and to put these sponge bodies on. I'll use them year-round. I just took a video here this week where the bluegills were in heavy into about a foot of water feeding and the sun warming them up. Bass come through. I just put it in front of them and they hit it. So they don't have to be on the beds. Again, you can use this with a bobber with uh, two feet of uh, monofilament on the end of that. Uh, do by yourself a little bit of fly line wax to help uh, that line float so it doesn't pull the, uh, the spider down. But uh, for making these any cheaper and any quicker, I don't know of any other process to do that. Have fun. Good luck with your bluegill fishing.